Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit Worship Online, and thank you for continuing to invite us into your home each week. Next week is Palm Sunday, which also begins a full schedule of Holy Week worship and connection opportunities. At this point, the weather is looking good for outdoor Palm Sunday events, so if you are in the Denver metro area, you are invited to go to the web website, lchscentennial.org, and sign up for Palm Sunday, March 28th worship. If you're a member of Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit, please schedule time for the congregational meeting next Sunday, that's Palm Sunday, at 10 a.m. This is a Zoom event, and you should have received a mailing with info on the agenda items. For Holy Week, we will have online worship for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday celebrations. The sanctuary will also be open for Stations of Hope on Friday and Saturday afternoons. Weather permitting, we hope to also have two backyard worship services on Easter Sunday with an Easter egg hunt in between services. Sign up is at the website lchscentennial.org. Remember the midweek soup Zooms on Wednesday evening, the kids party Zoom on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., and Zoom communion each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Also, the food pantry continues to have record client traffic and our food donations, each, your food donations each week are much needed and appreciated. Remember our noisy offering for the month of March is going to Safe Outdoor Spaces Denver, and your continued gifts to this ministry, your tithes and your offerings to Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit are what will bring us into a post-pandemic wit witness to God's grace. Thank you. Now, I'd like to invite you to light a candle in your space as a visible sign of the Holy Spirit's presence in your home, in our midst, and in the world in which we are called to serve. We live in a conditional world. If conditions are not met or contracts not fulfilled, then consequences may ensue. God's covenants, however, are not reliant on our ability to honor them. How can this be true? It seems pretty unbelievable, silly, even naive. God's promised grace and love is unfathomable. Can we trust it? And if we do, what does it mean for our future, our lives, and our church? We open with this litany. We come to worship you, O oh God, longing for comfort. Open your arms to our distress and pain. Open our hearts to comfort others. Open our lives to new people and experiences. We yearn for your promised grace and love. We yearn for your justice and peace. Help us to find ways to be your grace and love in our lives. Teach us to embody your justice and peace. Amen. Amen. in times I failed, no mercy remains. Should I stumble again, strong heart in your grace, everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades, never ending, your glory goes beyond.
from the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John. Glory to Glory you, to O Lord. Lord. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in the world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. 
The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for, for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death that he was to die. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, you just heard it, some foreigners, these outsiders, they show up for the festival. They say, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip runs to Andrew and presumably says something along the lines of, hey, there are these foreigners who want to see Jesus, what should we do? Andrew obviously has no answer. Who wants foreigners, these outsiders around at a time like this? So they run off to Jesus and tell him the foreigners are at the gates looking for him. Jesus says, in effect, if you want to see me, really, really see me, just stick around. You'll have to deal with my death at the hands of the Romans to really, really see me. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? To which we might and we also need to add, are we ready for that? Then, obviously, there's some noise. Some thought that it was thunder, so it must have been pretty loud. Some thought it, it looked as if Jesus was talking to someone, but there's no one there. Must be angels, some surmise. It was that voice from heaven, the same voice that he heard at his baptism that said, You are my beloved. I am well pleased with you. It's the same voice from the cloud on the mountaintop with Peter and James and John. And, and Jesus said this, this, it, and with Jesus. And this voice said, this is my beloved. Listen to him. So, are we listening? And then Jesus says, Father, glorify thy name. The voice returns and says, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Or was it just thunder? Is he talking to angels? Has he simply lost it and started talking to himself? Should we even think of letting the foreigners see him when he's like this? Well, everyone's trying to figure out what's happening. Jesus announces... This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Which we would probably take to mean for our sake, not his. The voice that keeps coming around is for us, not for Jesus, which it makes perfect sense. Jesus already knows the voice, and that voice knows him. He's always heard this voice. He, he comes to get us to listen to the voice. So here's an unfair question. I wonder why we don't hear the voice like Jesus does more often, or maybe even why we don't hear the voice at all. And it might just surprise us to learn that to this very day, 90% of the peoples of the world outside of the Western culture regularly hear such voices. Would it surprise us to learn that modern Westerners are the minority, the anomaly, as those people who do not regular, regularly access this kind of communication with God and with other spirits? And questions is quite naturally, why not us? And most people say that we're just frankly too busy to be listening, or they think that we're too sophisticated to hear these voices. Or they think that you have to be crazy or mentally ill to hear such voices. Some folks have suggested that maybe it's because we are grown up. We have matured. Someone else has pointed out that most other cultures do not make such a big thing 
out of growing up. And isn't it Jesus, after all, who says that we are to come to the kingdom like children? And couldn't it be that we don't want to hear anything about having to watch him die, watch him be executed, the victim of this state-sanctioned capital punishment? Yeah, dress it up any way that you'd like. Dress it up as being like a grain of wheat. Call it what you may, but it is what it is. It's state-sanctioned state public execution. And in all the debate on capital punishment, how often are, are we asked to reflect upon what it might mean that the one who calls us into a relationship with the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob is in fact the victim of state-sanctioned capital punishment. All we know is that he says, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. This voice that says, you are my beloved, I am well pleased with you, I have glorified my name and I will glorify it again. We are left feeling that for God's name to be glorified, we need to be listening to God's voice and learn how to become part of the glorifying process. Holy Week. Holy Week and all the anticipatory signs that, do, that go with it may be seen as a bit dark and maybe even at times a little scary. But it's not nearly as frightening as the prospect that for others to see Jesus, we might need to be part of the glorifying process. In Sunday school, we rarely hear anything about this voice and its being for us. Seminaries? Typically, they don't offer a whole lot of training on how to listen for this voice Jesus says is for us. The creeds, they don't appear to discuss or encourage this kind of listening. The catechism, it doesn't seem to discuss it or direct us to a learning, yearning to listen. Yet there it is. This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. It really does seem as if we best get listening to hear what this voice is saying, what this voice says, nothing less than the future of the whole world is at stake, he goes on to say. The problem is that those of us who like the foreigners, want to see Jesus are the very people to whom others come expecting to see Jesus in us, in what we say, in what we do. During this past year of pandemic, many of us have found new meaning and desire to see or to experience Jesus. We have come face to face with, with the ways and which our world continues to oppress, but it's also lifted new movements to create opportunities to correct what has been wrong for so long. This pandemic, it's allowed us to see what privilege looks like and whom privilege benefits. And this has left us wondering what it looks like to serve the Father. Jesus says that those who serve must also follow. Today, we are serving the Father by loving our neighbors, by listening to those voices telling us that they're not doing so well. We're following Jesus by protecting our neighbors. And here's the catch. Every single one of us is significant to somebody else. The people to whom we are significant will catch this thing from us if they know that we are, beyond a shadow of a doubt, absolutely devoted and loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ. But the trouble is that in those moments that we think as of off moments, 
others decide whether or not we are truly, really committed. Those times that a person says, I need to talk to you, or when we're weeding the garden, or when we're working in the office, or when we're grading the road, or nailing on a molding, or painting a room, or cooking a meal, the normal life stuff, when we're speaking to a child. These, these are the times, these are the places where the other person decides who we really are. There really are no days off for followers of Jesus Christ if our faith and its vitality are to be contagious. Next Sunday. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. It's the beginning of Holy Week. The most important week in the Christian year. It would be a great step in the art of listening to carve out some time to be in the week ahead. To be serving Him. To be following him, to be with him wherever Jesus might be. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, the great vigil of Easter are all times that we need to come and be with him. Follow me, he says. And we need to listen for this voice. The voice that is in fact for our sake, not for his. The voice speaks to us so that we might know how beloved we are. This year, it's been one of much listening. We've heard the voices of so many. We've heard the voices of our neighbors who are black and indigenous people of color in ways that we maybe have never heard them before. We've heard the stories of families in need. We've heard the voices of anger, despair, of rage. We've heard the voices of the marginalized, the once forgotten. What if this is the voice that has come for our sake?
Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, my. 